what's up guys we're back it again with a new giant skeleton graveyard deck that's always capable of making a comeback no matter how down and out a game might seem having giant skeleton with evolved archers and graveyard gives you the damage potential to blast back in any match the rank 8 player in the world uses this deck to destroy pro players and he adapted an already annoying deck to cover its weaknesses. Usually, when you cycle Giants in the back, they won't be able to help out on defense if your opponent spams at the same time. But when you cycle a Giant Skeleton in the back, it can actually attack, making building up big pushes significantly safer. This Giant Skeleton Graveyard deck gets more Rage Quits than the regular Giant Graveyard decks. Because after you take a tower, opponents will be slamming their spam into rock-solid defenses for the rest of the match. If you only have one evolution, use the Evolved Archers, and play Snowball instead of regular Zap. It's time to add a big skeleton with a bomb into our graveyard to assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And giant skeleton love to everyone that's supporting the channel with critter code SIRTAG. This top 775 player in the world is ready to get wrecked by graveyard. And it's fun because giant graveyard adapted in the most malevolent way possible. Having the giant skeleton so then your opponent can't break through, it means that you actually have defensive utility in a deck that is usually meant to be fully offensive. So right now, the Giant Skeleton is going to be able to body block so we can soak up a lot of damage. And it's actually going to be able to kill the Night Witch because most of the time, Night Witch would just stay alive and it wouldn't die there because our Giant wouldn't be able to do any damage to it. But fortunately, the Giant Skeleton's got it covered. And the Giant Skeleton's going to approach towards our opponent's tower and possibly keep our Little Prince alive just long enough to force out a Barbarrel. So definitely in this position, it's important for us to recognize that we can't counter all of those Barbarians with anything other than a Bowler. If I decide to be stupid and I cycle a Night Witch and I'm like, yeah, it's going to work. Night Witch Bats just have a absolutely miserable time into someone that's going to be cycling this insane amount of spam into us. Also, we're definitely going to go in for our Archers here because not only are they phenomenal at just cleaning up all of the Bats, but they're also going to get to the Evolution, so it's a two-for-one trade for us. Also, he thinks that, I mean, well, I guess he knows he's going to get a really good interaction there. Wow, that, that, was, that was rough. Um, I actually thought that that would maybe die, and then I looked at my tower and I remembered I'm running Cannoneer. So the best player with this deck is running Cannoneer, but as you guys are about to see, uh, it does not do so well when it gets flooded by bait cards. Fortunately, most of the time you're able to comfortably kill the bait cards since you have arrows and zap and then also bowler, but in that very specific situation, that was not the case. So I think it's better for us to go for a little prince in the back, because if we go in for a graveyard directly into evolved barbarians, that would be horrible. So I want to be able to build up a bit of a bigger push before I do anything stupid. So I'm going to go for my bowler with a little prince, and then I think I can giant skeleton afterward. Hopefully this works out. Wait, what? Uh, I did not expect that to be even a remote possibility by our guy here. That is obviously horrendous for us. It's still winnable. It's just not great. Also, we need to be able to stack up a lot of stuff here. He's going to go for an Evo Zap. That's not going to be able to kill all of our stuff. So that's huge. The fact that he has poison is triggering, though. That is not a card that I even expected in the slightest with a Night Witch graveyard counter. Like, what the heck, man? Anyway, we are going to go in for our graveyard now. I can easily go in for an Evolve Zap to clean up most of his stuff. And then I can go in for our archers afterward. And I wonder if he's going to be able to defend this. I don't think he does. I think he's going to sack his entire tower there. Despite him having poison and barbarians, we were poised for a really nice offense. And it worked out. It just shows never give up, never surrender until the game is actually over. Because even if you match into a poison deck with Lava Hound for whatever reason, you can still dig out a dominant W. Wait, guys, we almost 3 crowned him. This is ridiculous. I, I'm going to 3 crown him. I'm going to 3 crown him. I'm going to go in for a graveyard, but I'm going to have the bowler in the middle, and the bowler is going to tank for the graveyard skeletons. Meanwhile, all we have to do is go for arrows. I'm not going to go for a zap, because if you think about what happens with the zap, is the zap resets the king tower from targeting on top of the bowler onto the graveyard skeletons. So I'm so stoked to collect the win there. As you can see, even if you're down against a top 800 player in the world, you can always bounce back with graveyard. And I'm not going to lie, I'm sincerely shocked that he was playing a Barbarian's Poison deck with Lava Hound. That is a huge hard counter to us, and we still beat it. I have no idea what that top ladder player was cooking. But after clobbering him with a clutch comeback, we've reached 5,700 in the world. Usually, when I pop off the Cannoneer to show the accessible version of the deck, I always talk about how overpowered it is, but in reality, it literally lost us that last game almost. It forced us to make the comeback, and maybe made for a more entertaining game for you guys. But now the Prince's Tower is in, and it'll be an easy win versus all the bait decks. To so jump into the game here, we split up our archers to counter wall breakers, and this guy's gonna have Goblin Drill. We saw the banner at the start, and I really thought the guy was either gonna be running a Battle Healer deck or some type of Sparky deck, because those are the cards in his banner. But he shifted gears, and he's running a Cycle deck instead. 
So generally with this type of matchup, it's going to be advantageous for me to go in for giant skeletons in the back, protecting the weaker tower. And then if he's going to have a vault bomber, I have to arrows that immediately. But he's not going to have that because he didn't cycle the regular one. So we're totally fine just zapping here and finishing off the wall breakers. If you zap while the wall breakers are on your side of the map, because you're going to be stunning them, they don't do any damage to your tower. If you have the cannoneer tower, you can actually fully ignore those wall breakers and you do take zero damage. So that's one of the better things about Cannoneer. It's unfortunate that we didn't get the Cannoneer in that matchup, but we got in the last matchup where it actually hurt us. Anyway, it is what it is. I'm going to go for Archers here since we're going to be spamming the Evolution, and that's going to be a bit better than Cycling Little Prince there. I definitely want to go in for a Bowler, and I'm in a pretty good spot, all things considered. If I go for a Graveyard on the right-hand side, we've got Archers, and we also end up having Bowler counter pushing. So it's one of those things that... If I eat damage from the Evolved Wallbreakers, that's fine because I need to be able to guarantee damage in the right-hand side with the Bowler. I need to make sure... Oh my gosh, you're playing against another person with Poison. It's ridiculous that this is the case that Clash Trial is throwing it at me. But the Bowler was locking onto the tower and his Cannoneer wasn't targeting what he wanted. Now we can go for a little Prince and I believe that we're going to have to go Arrows. Maybe not though. No, 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 we don't have to. I'm going to eat a ton of damage in the left-hand side, but it's okay because... I think that it's overall going to be fine if we can graveyard consistently in the right-hand lane. Obviously, having evolved archers is a pretty big deal, but I generally want to be cycling stuff in front of them like a giant skeleton so we can get more value from them. If we can bait out a poison, that'd be hilarious. I don't think it's going to happen. But if we can crush the Tesla fast enough, we can go for a graveyard. And the thing is, even if we don't have a tank for the graveyard, in this matchup in particular, it should be good for us because he has to spam a poison on this. The Cannoneer can't clean up all the skeletons fast enough. So he's taking an absurd amount of damage. And that's why we capitalize on that advantage at that point. Because I knew that... If we could just spam enough cards, we could force out Elixir that he wouldn't want to drop. And then if he's dropping enough Elixir, then he's not able to afford the poison instantaneously. And if he's not dropping the poison instantaneously, the damage to the skeletons get stacks up crazily quickly. Also, another thing that B-Rad and top ladder players will do is they will end up letting the Cannoneer target onto the skeletons first instead of the tank. Because the tank will actually die really, really quickly. And you don't want the Cannoneer to be able to kill your tank because obviously uh, if that happens, then you are just not going to be able to uh, force out any extra elixir because they'll just poison on the graveyard skeletons and it's, it's pretty easy for them to defend them. So that's one thing that I learned from watching better players and people just play this game uh, very, very high level. Also, he's going to poison and I think we need to go in for a graveyard here. We might win or lose based off of this right now. I'm an Evolved Archers. I'm going to try to go in for a Zap. And maybe, just maybe, we can get enough damage. We're going to be so freaking close. Please give me the win. Oh my gosh, the Skeletons are swarming. We just need anything. Let's go. 52 HP. And that is one of the most clutch wins again. Wow. Clash Trial, you're really playing with my heart today. And making me dedicate blood, sweat, and tears in a mobile game to come up with these Ws. Games are meant to be fun, but Clash Royale is on a mission to stress me out. And honestly, close games like that, especially when you don't think that you're going to win and you get a surprise victory, are the reason I play. If every game was a landslide victory in one way or another, it just wouldn't be very fun. After beating yet another Poison player with our graveyard deck, we've pushed up to 4,900 in the world. Yo, we got a game against Uncle Drew. He is a top 600 player and maybe the first person that won't be playing Poison against us. Come on, Clash Royale. I am begging for an amazing matchup. You got me down with my giant skeleton and we are feeling like we might be playing against another Poison deck. Because, guess what? That's a knight and a log, and that means that it could be Minor Poison or Goblin Drill with a really quick card cycle. So, we'll have to wait and see if we get lucky. Or maybe it might be Hog Rider. It might be Hog Rider Earthquake giving us a good matchup. Please have Hog Rider Earthquake. I need it right now. I'm feeling it in my bones, brother. The big giant skeleton bone man is ready to give us value, I believe. Yes, sir. Knock away the queen. Okay, unfortunately, we literally have to let that uh, lock onto our tower so that we can go archers and then hopefully finish it off, maybe get him to Fireball. Please just let that die. All right. So I'm given the opportunity to go all in like a talented giant graveyard player or defend the expo. You guys already know the option. <laughs> it is giant graveyard all the way. Without the giant, it is just spam like a madman. And we're going to go for a zap because the bat is in the air and we don't even care. Look at the damage that we're dealing after <laughs> the damage that we took. I wonder how he's feeling because <laughs> he just got slaughtered. Oh, he responded. He's like, Jake, you wonder how I'm feeling? Here's the Flaming Goblin emote. The Flaming Goblin emote is versatile. It can BM your opponent when you take a tower, you spam the Flaming Goblin emote if you're a sinister sir. Or, you know, when you lose a tower, you're just saying, hey, that, that wasn't good for me. That sucked. And those type of emotes, 
If you guys are wondering, pro tip, use the Flaming Goblin emote because it's overpowered. A few flames later. And it looks like this dude just spontaneously combusted. His towers are burning down, and there's no doubt there's probably a frown on his face after he lost in such a quick fashion. But hey, we're climbing up quicker, and you love to see Giant Skeleton Graveyard finally getting the good matchup it deserves. Or maybe it never deserves good matchups, being a skillless and toxic deck, and we just got a little bit lucky there. But after playing Clash Royale for seven years, I have a feeling that it doesn't punish toxic decks. If anything, usually they thrive. Hey, this guy's gonna have the Cannoneer banner, and he's not gonna have the Cannoneer tower. Wow, what a disappointment, my dude. It's fun to play against the Cannoneer when you're gonna have Graveyard, because you get to swarm their tower, and you're like, Hey, how are you liking those skeletons seizing all of your hit points? So he's not going to be swimming in the Sea of Skeletons as deliberately as we would want to have happen at the start, but it might still work later on. We're going to go for Little Prince very early on. I hope it can go and target that, please. Oh, not fast enough. I always expect the Little Prince to kill the Wall Breaker, and it never does. I don't know why I always expect that outcome, but, uh, you know, maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll learn. We're going to go for a Zap because I want to be able to kill that and make sure that the Mega Knight doesn't jump. It should just... Oh, no, it jumps. Oh, it didn't hit my tower. Wait, it hit my tower. What the heck? Oh, how does it not hit my tower from the jump, but it hits it with the successive attacks afterward? How does that make sense? Did it like move the boulder slightly? Did the Mega Knight jump slightly closer afterward? Like there must have been some incremental movement that I didn't notice there. Had to have been, right? There's no way. Anyway, it'd be what it'd be. And I guess we're gonna go for a giant skeleton in the back. Make sure his Archer Queen locks out of that instead of hitting my tower. And I believe that we can win this game the later it gets because Giant Skeleton is not going to do so well in single into this because I can't afford a graveyard and then arrows. It would just cost too much elixir. At least I think it would. Pretty sure it would. Wait, why is he doing that? Am I stupid? I'm so stupid. This is really dumb. He's definitely going to drop some bait cards, right? Uh, I can arrows those. I can arrows those. I don't know how bad that is for me, though. Oh, I'm spending so much elixir. I am really, really low. Bro, don't hurt me. All right, well, we have to just eat that. And I get to go bowler and then not defend against wall breakers. So I should have been smarter and realized that if I go in for offensive plays, it comes at a cost. And double elixir, he's not going to be able to go wall breakers because I can just counter them for cheaper elixir investments because I'll actually be able to afford my defenses. But because I wasn't able to, the game is kind of spiraling into a chaotic and uncontrollable state. So generally with this graveyard deck against Mega Knight decks that only have bait cards, you'll be able to easily afford the arrows and all of the cards that you need on offense and your defense at the same time simultaneously to be safe and get guaranteed damage. But specifically in our situation where, you know, our deck doesn't allow for that in single, uh, we shouldn't be trying to do things that are impossible. All right, we're going to go for archers here. We should be able to kill all this stuff. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Those, do those die? I, I hope so. I mean, I'm going to arrows. All right, we're not dead yet. <laughs> you know, I'm so happy Evolved Skeletons got a nerf because that would have been an instant loss. I mean, I genuinely don't believe he deserved that damage, but he got it. So it is what it is. But I used the Night Witch, and I think that we're in a decent spot, all things considered. We can go for Evolved Archers. We should be able to go in for a Graveyard soon. We know he's definitely going to go in for a Mega Knight, so I think I have to practically focus on defending that first and foremost. Then I'll go for an Evo Zap here, guarantee that the Archer Queen dies. And then I can go in for a Giant Skeleton Graveyard and probably Arrows and win. I mean, I think I just win, right? There's no way he's defending that with anything. Like, you can't. Just archers plus arrows just clean it all up and then we can go for our archers again and wait we're coming back in the game we're slithering like a snake and i feel like we can touch grass guys we might be able to win the tower is grass and we want it <laughs> please oh my gosh just let me afford the ability save the booty hey we got it <laughs> what a wonderful wild ride oh my goodness I hope that we can just zap on the bats and then have our bat lock into the tower. That's bat news bears for you, bro. Oh, please. Barely just enough damage. Yes. The comebacks today are sensational. And genuinely, I made so many misplays at the start. That was far from a perfect game. And we came back when we were so far behind for another awesome and unexpected win. Yo, this guy's going to have arrows in the banner. And we're going to give him exactly what he wants in two ways. The archers and the spell. Unfortunately, arrows haven't gotten evolved yet. I wonder if they're going to be like containing bombs. Kind of like Cupid's arrows, piercing more than just his heart though, hitting his tower and his soul. So hopefully right now, after we see our opponents running arrows and skeletons, they're probably going to be playing a graveyard deck as well. I mean, that's what I would typically anticipate, right? If we see skeletons with arrows, it has to be either a balloon deck or it's going to be graveyard. There aren't too many other different deviations. I mean, maybe it's a weird rail giant deck or something. Oh my gosh, wait, what? 
Dude's packing an elixir golem deck. Yo, I wasn't even half anticipating that. For real, that was insane. All right, so we definitely want to go for a zap here. So we're not going to like comfortably lose the game right out of the jump. The fact that that even was a possibility. When the guy dropped more spells on my bowler, it's just astonishing to me that the people can be this aggressive in the game. You know what? We're going to take it to him. We're going to be fully aggressive as well. Let's spam it back. Let's see if he like, likes the taste of his own medicine out here. We're going to be able to cannibalize the tower with a lot of skeletons and force out a Night Witch in the back. Isolating that away from an Elixir Golem, unless he's crazy enough to slap down an Elixir Golem in front of that. I don't think he would. I, I feel like there's no one when you get higher ranks. Oh my gosh, no, he did it! <laughs> this guy is the definition of a certifiable savage. Oh my gosh, wait, he deleted everything. How did that work? I was messing around. I didn't think I had to like worry about that. And then he raged last second and the bats ate my freaking little prince alive. What did the little prince do to you? I mean, I guess he was broken for a century and maybe you have some like pent up aggression that you took out against him, but dude, he deserved a bit of a better life there. All right, so I definitely want to go in for a bowler, but I want to drop down the side that he's going to be predisposed to spamming into us. And I always think that I'm running cannoneer because whenever I'm ladder pushing, I usually use cannoneer since it is overpowered. So I'll be having this tendency of over defending against bats. I don't know if you guys have ever switched towers and you're like, wait, I don't have to do that anymore. It's insane. Anyway, oh my gosh, he's going to go for an elixir collector in the back right when I graveyard. You know what? It's not that bad. We can evo zap it. For two elixir, we get a pause elixir trade against the elixir collector. You know what? It's fine. That actually worked. That was good for me <laughs> for the first time ever. Oh my gosh. Wait, the archers are probably going to die to the skeleton king. That was astoundingly stupid on my end, but it's still going to work out possibly if he all ends into me. He's going to have evo bats, so that is a problem for sure. As long as we get good arrows, though, we should be fine. I'm going to pop through with the arrows. I'm going to use the little prince ability, and I'm going to zap earlier than I did last time because I don't want my... Oh, come on. There are a few things certain in life, and I guess the little prince always dying against Elixir Golem is one of them now. Dude, you are not letting us leave this game with a W yet. You're just spearing everything you possibly can. This guy is committed to the cause of losing, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Beating out Elixir Golem players is the best way to end the day. And you also have the Little Prince for an added safety net. You're going to be secure while they spam right into their death. No lie, this Elixir Golem player was singing Jesus Take the Wheel while spamming units right into his slaughter fest. While the bowler was the main controller, taking the wheel and the game too. Blast the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe for more daily content and have an amazing rest of your day.